wind in your hair, and the sex appeal is everything in the old cars. Well, one big car collector I know says that if I had a favorite, I wouldn't own all these cars. I like to say that every old car has a story. Oh, old cars at some point reach the status of, of art, uh, fine art, if you will. They're rare, they're hard to get a hold of, they're, they're harder to maintain probably than a Picasso. They get in your heart. few muscle cars sprinkled around. I got into those for a while. Oh, let's see. The Mercury pickup's rare, all original Bronco. That's the first stretch Suburban ever made. Dad and I dreamed that concept up when it's I like to say that every old car has a story. But I always tell people, if, as we go around, if you see one that you particularly like, uh, point it out to me. And if I don't know the story, I'll make one up real quick. This is a Cleveland. Bought it from a fellow named Cleveland who lived in Cleveland <laughs> and claimed to be part of the original Cleveland family that built the Cleveland automobile. Cars were just uh, one of those things that, that Dad enjoyed, I enjoyed, and like, like I said, we both enjoyed it enough that we would both take time off work to do it together. Oh, when Dad was growing up, he couldn't afford a car. Dad's mother, my, my Granny Elsie, uh, preached at Dad all his life that can't never could. She would not let him say can. And of course, I heard that all my life, and my kids have heard that all their lives. He got his first car when he was 19 years old. The car was nine years old. He was working in a grocery store in Neosho, Missouri, making $7 a week. The son of the owner of the grocery store had been in the military, and because of that, he could get a new car. But he couldn't sell his old one, so he finally came to Dad one day, and he said, here's the title, here's the keys, I want $200 for the car. I don't know anybody wants a car more than you do, so just pay me for it when you get the money. And Dad paid him $2 a week. When Dad passed away, I stopped and assessed where we were. We had about 300 cars. We had 78 different manufacturers in the collection. And, uh, and I remember thinking, wouldn't that be fun to have 100, to say you had 100? So I started watching for the rare and unusual stuff. And, and as I told you, the rare and the unusual is normal here, OK? Today we have almost 200 manufacturers represented in our collection. So uh, over the years I've, I've kind of focused on that. The economy helped. Because of that there were a lot of little car collections that went under. A lot of cars came on the market that you'd never seen before and that you'll never see again. And they did it at such a time that the economy was so down that they were on the market really worth the money. I'd go to a sale and I might buy six or eight cars, all different brands that you'd never heard of. I always say that I have a whole head full of useless knowledge. Now, and I've never considered myself to be a history buff. Uh, but you can't 
play with the old cars and, and ignore the history. The history is, is a part of it. The black Stutz here was Alan Jackson's car, came from Alan Jackson's collection, country western singer. The 38 Lincoln was FDR's parade car during his last term in office. And the 32 Lincoln was, the KB was uh, FDR's inaugural parade car. And we actually now have film footage of him riding in that car in his inaugural parade. We've got several cars that were owned by celebrities. Uh, and in that corner was, was cars that were used in movies. My dogs were supposed to be here 40 minutes That is the one and only truly original shag and wagon from the Dumb and Dumber movie. It won't be long until you're old enough to get a driver's license, Robin. The Batmobile is number six of six built for the TV series. And George Barris has signed off on that car, said that he made it, and... Uh, and told us some of the background on it. Robin, turn on the automatic tire repair device. The, the little Porsche sitting there was Tina from Gone in 60 Seconds. Oh, come on. Which was the first car they stole in the movie, the Porsche they drove through the showroom window. This, this whole room is really about Dad. The future of the hobby depends on people uh, gaining an appreciation for the old cars like I have, like you have, like, like most of the people watching this probably have. Uh, I think the 02, 3, 4, and 5 uh, Ford Thunderbird, the little two-seater, uh, will be collectible someday what I call future collectibles. I think uh, any of the limited production Ferraris, okay, the, the 550 Barchetta, the 550 Super America, uh, you know, any, the, the, the cars that they make for the masses, and they make hundreds or thousands of them, uh, will always be valuable because they're fine Ferrari products. but. Uh, the ones that they make one or two or ten or, or a numbered series of, uh, they'll always be valuable. Uh, and all the cars are for sale. Uh, we call it a collection, but it's, but it's an ever-evolving collection. We try to make it better all the time.